welcome back to the channel folks, Mr. H here for my review of Happy Death Day to You. Now we'll discuss non-spoilers first, I'll give you a big warning, and then we'll discuss spoilers. This is of course the sequel to, I believe it was last year's movie, which seems to catch a lot of people by surprise. It's a universal Blumhouse production, uh, and this was a really, really good movie. So like I said, I'll discuss non-spoilers first, then get into spoilers. But straight off the bat, I liked it. It's not perfect, and it has a really, really bad first act, but it was enjoyable. It was genuinely quite enjoyable. So in terms of it being a sequel, it's really important to note that it doesn't really reference anything to do with the first one, uh, in, in so much as you know what the first one is. It's Groundhog Day, but kind of a horror, I guess, because there's murder involved. This movie embraces quite a heavy comedic aspect and it's it's difficult to really say this because it's not the right analogy but I feel like it's kind of a more refined and more serious scary movie for a modern day if that makes sense if anyone remembers the scary movies so it's very tongue in cheek it's very almost parody-esque you know satirical almost but a, a semi-serious with it, it was really, really enjoyable, really, really good fun. So to kind of recap, at least on the story, woman, Jessica Roth's character, uh, Tree, I think her name is, is back in a loop of, uh, of being killed and you know having to relive the same day, day after day after day after day. You do figure out why this is happening though, because it's not the same thing as what happened before, and I'll discuss why that is in spoilers, but you do find out why. And it's actually quite interesting, and it is quite integral to the plot and how the movie moves forward. It's not a horror at all. Like, it, it's not a horror. Uh, there's no elements to it which are scary at all, but it doesn't need to be. And I'm going to say this quite cautiously, but I could probably liken this more to a romantic comedy. Um... There are some romance elements to this movie which, again, they're not really integral to the story, so it's not like a romantic comedy as you know it, uh, but there is some romance involved which kind of chugs along with the plot. But it was really good. I had a really, really good time with this. I don't begrudge uh, buying the tickets for this film at all. Jessica Roth is fantastic. So she's playing a comedic role, but there's some parts to it where she's putting on quite a lot of waterworks and quite heavy emotional moments. But she was really good in it. And she's got some acting chops. Like, believe you me, she's definitely got some acting chops. And I would love to see her in more stuff. No, genuinely, she was really, really good. Her acting ability is a lot more than what this movie lets, uh, lets on. So she plays this comedic role, but like I say, her acting chops is top notch. In terms of the story, it's quite paint by numbers. It's not that, you know, it's not going to wow you with the story. Uh, it's not going to wow you with twists and turns either. The first act is really quite fumbly. And I don't know whether that's a byproduct of them doing this quick turnaround with the movie. But the first act sets up some bits and pieces which don't really go anywhere and are not explained. But I don't know whether they're going to be explained in a third one, which there's a potential chance of that happening. So, like I say, first act, not very good. But then it really starts to pick up into the second and third act to quite a good finale. Like, it's actually a really, really decent film. Uh, cinematography, lighting, things like that were fine. Like, it's a Blumhouse Universal production of a fairly low... I mean, it's very low budget. It was like $9 million. So it's a very, very low budget film. But, you know, it's not something which you take note of. You don't go, oh, this is a low-budget movie. It all looks very, very uh, up to par. It's better than a TV movie, for instance. Now, in terms of the effects, because there are some, you know, there is some blood and gore, and there is some moments where there's a little bit of CGI involved or, you know, green screen, stuff like that. It comes across fine. It's not blatantly obvious that it's there, and it's not really, really bad. It's not overly ham-fisted or low-quality. It looks fine, and for the budget, $9 million, great, absolutely brilliant. I hope this makes some money, because 
it's kind of dumb fun. Now, I spoke to a subscriber of mine about this film, uh, asking whether, you know, whether I can recommend it. And I said, and this is probably the best way to round it up, because it's quite a short film. It's about like an hour and a half long, so it's not very, very long. And I said, this is the perfect film to go and have dinner and then go watch a movie. It's not going to inflate your night to something beyond manage, you know, beyond something you can manage. You can enjoy both and you can have a good time and you won't begrudge either. That's what this movie is for, you know, date night. That's what this movie is all about. I think this is like a date night movie. It's comedy, a little bit of gore, a little bit of kind of some jump scares here and there. That's it. I can recommend this movie. Go and watch it. Uh, Jessica Roth, I want to see more things because she's genuinely really, really good. Everyone else was fine. Nothing really of worth to note. But there are some genuine comedic moments here which will make you laugh. Uh, even as a British person, because obviously American and British comedy doesn't always line up. This actually has some laugh out loud moments for me. Anyway, so moving on, let's get into spoilers now. So we can talk about the first act, why it's so bad, and then how some of the plot points don't go anywhere. So you've been warned. This is a spoiler warning, but if you, you know, if you do click off, hit subscribe if you enjoyed this and stay tuned for more in the future. So there you go, spoiler warning, let's go. Um, so the opening to this movie is following uh, the friend of the guy that Tree fell in love with at the end of the first one, during that whole process. And that's the kind of romantic element. But anyway, so we follow this guy and we learn that he is now in a loop, but then we see a doppelganger of him but then it goes nowhere. So that's the first act and it's quite long and it's really quite poorly handled because nothing is really explained and I don't want a movie to hold my hand but you know when where the plot points go nowhere it's a little bit it's a little bit surprising and there's some elements to it anyway so it's explained that this is happening because this man invented a machine called Sissy it's like some kind of quantum physics machine which creates time or something along those lines. Creates these loops. He didn't intentionally do it, but he created it anyway. Now, that's important because obviously we need to set this character up, but there wasn't really any need to have two of them. However, what it does establish is that when we create this loop, you can also go to a different dimension, which is what Tree does in this movie. She goes to a different dimension. So it's not the same day that's being played out like the first film. So it is different. But that doesn't make any sense because when she gets to the dimension, there's not two of them. So why was there two of these people at the start of this one? It doesn't really make any sense. And it's not explained. It doesn't really go anywhere. And it's not rounded out at the end either, which I think maybe they're going to set up for a third one. I think that's potentially why they did this. But it's a little bit frustrating. And... but. <laughs> It's not frustrating to the point where you look at it and you go, oh, this movie annoyed me as a result of it. It was fine. Now, normally I would talk about technical aspects and things like this, but this isn't a movie to discuss technical aspects. It's a dumb, fun film. A little bit of gore, a little bit of jumps. It's fun. Uh, like I said, there's some genuine laugh out loud moments. And the twist at the end in terms of there being like two killers, because there is two killers, uh, you can see it coming a mile off. It's super predictable, but you're not watching this movie to solve, you know, a murder mystery crime. You're watching this movie because it looks like a good laugh and it is a good laugh. I would like to see more of these. Like I say, it's a really, really bad comparison, but it's like Scary Movie, but a little bit more serious, a little less tongue in cheek uh, and a little less crap because, you know, Scary Movies, yeah, they're of their time. They're not the best movies. But uh, yeah, I really like this. I would genuinely like to see more of these types of films. Blumhouse with Universal, they made something good here. Now in terms of whether you have to watch the original to know what's going on in this film, you really don't actually at all. So don't feel like just because you haven't seen the first one you have to uh, you know, go and watch it before you watch this. You don't. You can go and enjoy this movie because it's really self-explanatory and they explain it in the movie. Which is great and a testament to the writers. The quick turnaround, not such a big deal. Um, would I like to see more? Yes. Can I recommend this? Absolutely. It's a date night movie. Go out. It's Valentine's Day. Go take your, your woman out, your man out, whatever. Have a meal. Go watch this. You'll have a laugh. It's good. Uh, it's dumb fun. 
worth the price of admission just for a bit of dumb fun. So anyway guys, if you have seen this movie, let me know down below in the comments section. Did you find the first act as fumbly as I did? And did you have some laugh out loud moments? I'd genuinely be interested to hear. As always, if you like this video though, please do hit subscribe and make sure you turn those bell notifications on because YouTube doesn't really notify anyone anymore and also doesn't really put anything in your subscription box. So it's really, really broken at the moment, but it is what it is, you have to make do. Anyway guys, as always, I have been Mr. H, take care.